Okay, now it's time for us to look at the directional derivative. Okay, if we have a line, okay, and we take the, and we also would like to find what the, or what we would like to do is we have this gradient. If we take the gradient of our function, here it is. It'll be perpendicular to our unit function, okay, a unit function, and it's um, straight line, okay? That's what we want to do now, okay? What if we want the rate of change of a scalar function, e, in a given direction, S. Okay, so this has a bar over it, so that means it has direction. Okay, since S is a line, that's all it is, let's define it in parametric form. Okay, so S, for two points on this line, S is going to be X minus X1 for our I component. Y minus Y0 for our J component. And Z minus Z0 for our K component. And this here, as you can see, we have, this is our, this is just a straight line. This is a scalar. And this is a vector with a hat on. Okay, so that makes this a vector. So the scalar is this S here, That's the, but the direction here is tied to our unit vector, S, U sub S. With our U sub S, given by whatever value A, I, plus bj plus ck. So these are constants. abc is constants and ijk are unit vectors. Okay, for the x and the y and the z component. Okay, this gives us the equation when you solve for x of this particular function this line that we solve for the x component, we solve for the y component, and we solve for the z component. Only thing we're doing is making x minus x0 equal to a, and solve for x, and we set b equal to y minus y0, and we set Z, C equal to Z minus Z zero. As we continue on with our directional derivative, this means we can express phi as X, Y, Z as a function of one variable. Okay, so we had three different variables, not vectors, three different variables. And now we're going to have one variable. We're just calling this S to simplify things. So, whereas if we take phi at S, the same phi at X, Y, Z, we are saying these are equal. For points along this line only. Okay? Let's take the derivative of phi with respect to S. Okay, to do that, phi with respect to x, we dealt with some of this before. Okay, we took the partial of phi over partial of x, dx, ds, partial of phi over the partial of y, dy, ds, plus the partial of phi with respect to z. We also can look at it in another form. 
as we can see here, we have our partial with respect to x, our partial with respect to y, and our partial with respect to z. And each one of these partials, okay, and this is still going to equal our um, derivative of our phi. And this is going to be dotted, the dot matrix times ai plus bj plus ck. So if we're given a function, we can um, come up with the answer. If we're giving two different functions, I mean two different, if we're given one, the unit functions here, we can actually dot these two vectors and come up with our answer. So we're using this before as our unit vector, as you can see, and we're using this as our um, gradient. Okay, so if you look here, we got our gradient dot our unit vector of the one variable. So if we want the rate of change in the direction of what? S. We find a unit vector u sub s and calculate the gradient of phi dot the unit vector s. So when we're talking here about directional derivatives, is the projection of the gradient on the unit vector. Okay, directional vector is the projection of the gradient on the unit vector. So here, we have solved before x, y, z. So now what is dx? dx ds is just s this goes to zero this is a what is dy ds ds what is dz ds is just c so we could take the dot product which we talked about earlier as an example we're given s the unit vector we're given here we're given here our gradient of phi. So if we can take a look at this. So this is our vector S. Now we are going to take the unit vector. Okay. How do we come up with this unit vector? Okay. The unit vector is the vector divided by its, guess what? Its um, amplitude or magnitude. Okay. And 1 plus 1, 1 squared plus 1 squared, the square root of that is 2, square root of 2. So it's 1 over the square root of 2, i plus k. Okay, now that we have our gradient, and now that we have our unit function, we're able to get an answer which is going to be you're multiplying two vectors. I mean, I'm applying dot product of the two vectors. You could tell it's a vector because it's a ij. It's a vector I, ik. And so when you look at this, you have 3i times 1 over the square root of 2 times i. i times i gives you 1. Okay. So you get 3 over 2. You have J component and no J component here. So that's 0. And you have no K component, but you have a K component. That gives you 0. And so you add them up and you get 3 divided by the square root of 2. You remember, we talked about this particular function. That's what we just did. We were given this particular function. We're given our gradient, 
and we had to rearrange and calculate um, what A, B, and C was for our unit vector. And at this time, we then did 10 minutes, so we'll let you do some practice problems.